Awakening, Chapter 6, Scavengers. I couldn't be sure if it was who or what was in possession of the flashlight that was growing with greater luminosity. All I knew was that it was getting drawing closer. Soon I'd be spotted. I couldn't risk running into another one of those machines. But I also couldn't just sit back if it was people. Perhaps they knew more, or maybe they might even be able to help get those poor folk out of the cocoons. As the footfall carried on in my direction, I could make out the steps were far more cautious and measured than the machines, which had been direct and steadfast. I soon realized that whoever those feet belonged to was joined by a companion, both of which were now engaged in a hushed conversation. What the hell, man? A male voice had asked, not in a gruff tone, but in a tone that seemed like they had been unprepared for this assignment. Shut up, will ya, and keep your voice down. You really want to bring those mechs down on us? The other had spoken, in kind, in an assured and calm demeanor. It was a sentence that had, however, filled me with dread. Mechs, as in Purel. This told me all I needed to know, and that the machine I'd fought down in the hospital wing wasn't the only one here. Okay, but seriously, what the hell? All those dead just sitting there? Just what kind of show went on here? The first had asked again. I told you, shut up. We're just here to find anything of any use and get out. By this time, the two individuals had traversed to the main length corridor. I could now see that they were both men. One was at least a foot shorter than the other. The shorter of the two had a mohawk styled, greased light brown hair, wearing dark dirty brown ripped jeans, an off white stone stain covered top with a crossed bridge and holding a sidearm in one hand and a flashlight in the other. The taller of the two, like his counterpart, also wore similar clothing, yet he seemed to have long, greased, dark brown hair and carried a sidearm as well. You really think the rumors are true? The shorter of the two spoke out again as I continued listening in waiting for them to both pass, so I could try and find an, an escape route through the participation area the men had come from. You listen to a lot of rumors. Which one are you on about this time? The taller of the two men asked, almost seemingly to be annoyed with the constant questioning. The one about the girl that said she was from here. It was as they said this, my interest peaked. Had another person woke and exited out of here already? Did they even know who they were? Or were they still as confused as I was until I learned the truth? I don't know and I don't care. All we're here for is to find any tech that seems either that it still works or can be used and get out. Now less talking and more walking. By now, the two men had made a goodly portion down the corridor and were rapidly closing in on my location. Once they passed and had exited through into the observation domes, I could make a break for the exit. Yet, as fate would have it, both men chose to stop outside the production office. Hey, is this door supposed to be open? No, it's not. That means something's inside. One of the mechs. Fearing that I was about to be discovered, I quickly found the nearest cover I could, wedging myself between the end of one of the farthest stations. I waited and held my breath 
as both men slowly entered into the room, both with their firearms raised, scanning the room, looking for me, to which I both prayed and hoped they wouldn't find me. I could only watch on, knowing I was greatly outmatched by them. All I had was my carving knife I'd taken from the kitchen. If either of them came close, I knew I'd have to use it regardless. The shorter of the two seemed to be taking a great deal of interest in the console I'd been reviewing the past footage on, while the bigger and taller of the two casually paced the room. I was sure at any minute they were going to find me, and with each second that passed, I could feel my grip on the knife growing tighter as my breath got shallower and deeper. Their concentration and focus of the area shifted moments later, as the tall of the two began to focus more intently on my hiding place. With the sound of a crashing thud coming from further down the corridor, I could only assume at that point that one of, of these other mechs had found the one I decapitated and left earlier. I watched as both men exited the production office and hung on, hearing their footfall walking off towards the hospital area. Once I was certain that the coast was clear, I poked my head out of the room, scanning both up and down the corridor, checking to see if it was safe to leave. I knew that I'd have to come back at some point to rescue those stuck in the other worlds, but I knew I also had to try and track down this girl the two men had spoke of. Perhaps she might be able to help. It was as I got to the end of the corridor, about to turn towards the participation area, that I heard the gunfire and shouting. It was then I was under no illusion that they were engaged with one of these mechs, but I couldn't help them. Something about them both made me feel as if they weren't trustworthy, and I'd been in far greater peril than I already was. Once back in the participation area, I quickly headed up the central stairway towards the doors. At the back of each step felt like I was climbing a mountain, and it seemed as if all the dead were watching my every move as if trying to hold me back, filling me with unease. As I approached the final few steps, ready to enter out into the world, or so I hoped, a bullet shot rippled and narrowly past me, hitting one of the skeletal figures, sending them from their once resting place to slumping to the ground. Stay right where you are, came a voice from behind me, one I recognized, as belonging to the taller of the two men. Not moving an inch, I stood frozen, knowing they had me dead to rights. As if I wanted to confront them, I'd have to wait until they got closer to do so. Just who the hell are you? I heard the mask. Still, I didn't move. You gotta be some type of fighter to take out one of those mechs without a gun. They continued. Just a man, looking for answers. I don't want any trouble, I told them, still waiting. Yeah, well you got trouble now. My partner's dead. And see, he believed in this crap, nonsense. All I cared about was getting paid and surviving. Now, I'm going to be a rich man, thanks to you, they added. I could hear them steadily making their way up the stairs getting closer. After a few moments, I could feel the muzzle of the gun pressed against my back. Any wrong move could be my last, I thought to myself. Somehow, I'd have to catch this man off guards in order to overpower him and wrestle the gun out of his hands. Look, I'm sorry about your friend, I told him, yet it seemed this only served to annoy him more so. Stop talking, more walking, they demanded, thrusting the muzzle of their gun into my back, hard, indicating for me to start moving up the stairs again. 
Sensing that my moment of now or never was quickly approaching, I made my move, and hoped I was quicker than he was at firing. I spun around to face my assailant, taking hold of the underside of his gun as he fired high into the ceiling. There was a deep ringing in my ears which sent me death. Using my free left hand, which was still clutching the knife, I took a swipe at the man, managing to cut his right wrist, making him recoil, as well dropping the gun. Using the brief few seconds I had, I hid amongst the rows of the dead, as the man began shouting, cursing loudly, slowly pacing up and down the central stairway, carefully, as if not painfully, looking for me. As I watched on from the far end, waiting for the right moment to move. If I tried to flee and leave, I'd be caught in moments. So I knew I'd have to fight my way out of this if I wanted to survive. Every so often the man would hear the faintest of noises, making him turn on the drop of a dime, firing a shot, hitting one of the skeletal dead, sending them dropping to the floor. Knowing I couldn't hide forever, I crept along one of the banks of chairs, positioning myself ready for him to begin making his way back up. To give myself the best advantage I could, I pressed up against the back of the row in front that I was situated between. Seconds seemed to take hours as I listened and waited for the footfall to get closer. Then it stopped as I saw his legs standing over me. Game's up, he called out, firing his gun, only to the sound of a click. As if realizing it was now or never, I pounced on him with the knife. Moments later, he lay at my feet. I felt sick to my stomach. Having survived against the machine was one thing, but to take the life of another no matter what they may have been like, just filled me with sorrow and remorse. To know that I had just added to the tally of dead here, in this room, just didn't sit well with me, and I knew I needed to get out of here, wherever here was. Leaving the man where he was, I walked back up the stairs, and without giving it a second thought, exited through the doors, leading out of the area. I came out, not into a lobby area, but into a passageway, filled with plastic plants and paintings of various stills from different eras adorning the walls, leading into the participation area, whereas the opposite wall opened up, giving me my first real look outside, with large bay windows looking out onto a skyline of derelict buildings, streets and neon signs which flickered on and off. A thick mist hung against a rain-swept area, and it was definitely evening. From where I was, I could tell I was at least ten floors up off street level. Various vehicles all of which I'd never seen before, stayed discarded, broken, and decayed, much like everything else here in this world that was nothing like where I'd not long been. Just when I thought I'd have time to take a moment and reflect on the past hour since coming to, with everything I'd experienced, just trying to make sense of it all, the lift which I'd not even noticed, until it opened up. As I stood taking in the view, came the sound of footfall exiting, stopping momentarily. What the? Bobby, you're going to want to see this, came a voice. I looked over to where the voices had come from, seeing much like the previous two men, stood a pair of men, one tall and a rather butch-looking of Afro-American descent, wearing a mixed match of cobbled-together combat gear, while his companion, a man whom was clearly shorter, reaching only to the other's shoulder height, again 
done in the same coupled gear, both stood looking at me, with the taller of the two speaking to someone they had just called Bobby on the radio device. After the last encounter I just had, I wasn't going to be caught off guard, so once more I raised my knife, ready to fight, and then I noticed the shorter of the two men holding up his hands, while the taller of the two quickly dropped the radio and held up his gun. Drop the knife, they demanded, not moving an inch. Easy now, we don't want to fight you. We're actually here for you, the shorter of the two men said, as we all stood waiting for the next move to be said and made.